Beer board meeting call to order. Ro um, roll call, please. Here. 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 Do I hear a motion for the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Under new business, we have two items. First is a request from Anderson County Chamber of Commerce for a Class E on premise special event beer permit located at 245 North Main Street, Clinton, Tennessee. Is there anyone here? Um, Mr. Meredith, would you like to approach the podium? We won't look at your casual. You look like you kind of look like me on a Friday. I apologize. I just or a Tuesday or Wednesday. I apologize. It's a good day to be on the water. Amen. I'm sure I'm showing sure that. So, I came in on two wheels with a bass boat. <laughs> so I'm Rick Meredith, 422 Mariner Point Drive, President of the Anderson County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this permit is very similar to what we did two years ago with a long table dinner. Obviously, we've changed the theme to Margaritaville on Market. So be a different thing, but it's the same setup as we did two years ago. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Meredith? So should the permit be located at 245 North Main? Should we amend that to? I mean, that was, we just used the address. We did it last time for the where's office. The, where's 240? Is that your office? The well, they're the ones asking for it. I think that's where the originator. Okay. Was. But it'd be right, on Market Street. Right. Premises right. will be Market team? Street. It'd be on Market Street. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Okay. So the same type of setup. Hope we had good weather. It's, it's hard to remember. It's been so long ago since we uh, did no that. No kidding. Yeah, we're praying for chamber weather. Very, very fun, very, very fun event. So, any questions? All in favor? Um, I'm sorry. Have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. Look Thank forward you. to seeing you and your Jimmy Buffett. So. You got a pair of head hat I can borrow? I'll get you one if you wear it. <laughs> you got to find one big enough to fit in my head. <laughs> Might be yeah. hard. <laughs> Easier said than done. Uh, number two is a request um, from Speedway, number 7108, for a Class B off-premise beer permit. Um, permit, I should say. Located at 2148 North Charles G. Sievers Boulevard in Clinton. Any representatives from there? Yes, ma'am. Are you the new manager? I'm the district manager. What, state your name and address, please. Uh, Catherine Nemeth, and then 4462 Ellsbury Drive, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, all right. So how long have you been a manager? I have been in this area for four years now. Okay, roughly. so y'all, y'all, the, the company as a whole, follow the same policies and procedures as far as checking for ID and, and all Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So what procedure do you use? Um, anybody that appears to be under the age of 40, they're required to ID. Uh, in our, as kind of a blanket policy across the board, um, we tell our employees to just ID everybody. Um, it kind of eliminates that second guessing when it comes to the employees, and that even includes with the um, regular customers. So the expectation is that anybody that comes through our door, they're expected to be ID'd. Okay, that's state law, isn't it? To have it to check everybody's ID. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I say this to everybody, and Councilman, y'all can jump in too. Is we're very serious about selling alcohol to minors, yep. and first offense. Um, even though we haven't had a first offense in a while, is, is you can almost guarantee you can tell your bosses it's going to be fifteen hundred dollars. Right. So um, just so just make sure you train well and and uh, do well. So. Absolutely. Any other questions? Hear a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, motion to adjourn beer board meeting. Regular meeting call to order. Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Here. Councilman Bryan. Councilman Harold. Here. Councilman Stanley. Here. Councilman here. 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 Let me back up a little bit, going back to a public hearing for ordinance number 658, amending Title IX, Chapter 6 of the Mobile Food Vending Regulations. Anyone here would like to speak on that? Go 
closing the public hearing. And again, we've already opened up the, the regular meeting call to order. Um, do you hear a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The prayer this evening be given by um, Vice Mayor Zach Fair. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you've given us. It's a beautiful spring day and be with us as we go through to conduct uh, city business. Lead, guide, and direct us by thy wisdom and by thy will. Uh, forgive us where we fail thee and uh, may we go on forth and uh, have a great, great week and a great month and uh, meet back here safely uh, next month. All this I ask in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Zach. Do you hear a motion for the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated March 22, 2021? So moved. Thank you. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. At this time, we'll be recognizing any visitors, or citizens with any concerns or praises. Speak now, forever hold your peace. Communications from the mayor. Um, I have a proclamation to give. So, if the Fox family would like to meet me at the podium. have a proclamation um, we as council have a proclamation for the for the Fox family and all that they've done for our community um, whereas Fox Motor Company was founded in 1944 by Gene and Margaret Fox in Lake City and relocated nine years later to Main Street in Clinton and whereas in 1966 they accepted a Toyota franchise by erecting a sign and investing $1,000 for parts led to them becoming Fox Toyota and whereas after more than 50 years of success on Main Street in Clinton, the dealership was moved in 2008 to its current location at 228 Fox Family Lane. And whereas three generations of the Fox family have proudly served the people of East Tennessee as an award-winning dealership, treating their customers as family and demonstrating to the community on a daily basis their Christian values. And whereas Jean and Margaret Fox, along with their daughter, Patricia Fox Hogue, have gone on to their heavenly home, leaving Stanley Sr., Ronnie, and Becky, along with other family members to operate the business. And whereas the Fox family has sold the dealership and moved on to the next journey, leaving a lasting legacy as they have earned the affection, respect, and admiration of the citizens of Clinton and surrounding areas. Now, therefore, the mayor and city council of the city of Clinton wish to commend Stanley Fox Sr., Ronnie Fox, and Becky Fox Grubb for their contribution to the city of Clinton and surrounding areas and urge all citizens to pay special tribute to these very special members of our community. This proclamation was adopted on the 26th day of April 2021. I would like for y'all to speak, um, if you like. Um, one thing I'd like to say, I want, I want Stanley to go first. Um, <laughs> but um, I, do, I do want to say that, you know, we, we've done several of these throughout my time. And I always say it makes the people, the, the people is what makes this town special in this community. And y'all are certainly following that group. And um, you, you've had a lot of opportunities to go somewhere else and invest, but never, never wavered your loyalty to Clinton. And I, for one, as a citizen, as a friend, um, I certainly appreciate that. I love you guys, and I know you're not done yet. I know you're going to be around, and you continue to contribute and be have a positive impact in this community. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say for, it was really nice of you all to do this. It was a big honor, and it's, an, it's, it's a good thing that you do for the people of Clinton, and you all do a great job on this, uh, on this commission, and we're just proud of all of you. And, and don't think we're going anywhere. We're going to be around. If you need anything that we can ever help you with, uh, please ask us, and we'll help you all we can. And I know most of the people on this uh, commission, uh, council, I should say, is, uh, is customers of ours. And you'll always be customers. We hope you continue to do business at Fox Toyota because the people that took over are just great people. T's met and Zach's met Jim. He's a, he's a great guy. He's going to do a great job. He's probably going to do a better job than we did because he's moved them into the 21st century with all these computers and all. But uh, <laughs> it's something but. Uh, but continue to do business here in the city, if you would, and support them. And uh, we do appreciate what you've done for us. All right. You know, I thank you all for all this. And we just kind of stirred the ship because all of our customers, like you all are, and our great employees, the only thing we did is, you know, we a real old machine. It could just really run on its own. But we thank you all. And uh, like Ronnie said, we're not going anywhere. We're not moving out of town. We're, we'll stay right here. So thank you all. I guess I'll, well, I will. I'll say thank you too. We really appreciate you all. This really is an honor. We do appreciate it. And we've been very blessed and we're just um, thankful that we've been able to pass these blessings along through, you know, helping our community. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank I'll you. see if I can get two proclamations for you. You might have to share them or cut it, cut it in thirds you take it home with you. <laughs> Thank you all. One other thing I wanted to, Mon, one other thing I wanted to show for our, our TV audience is this is the this is the new color of the new green bridge. So this is part of a handrail that's going to be on the outside of the bridge as you're going across. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty good size diameter mm -hmm. on that. But it's a little bit, maybe a little bit darker than the original. This is a resin, so it's going to last a very long time. But I thought you all would enjoy just seeing how that's going to look. Um, community reports, we don't have a city school board report today, right? Clinton Regional Planning Commission report. Councilman Ginn. <coughs> The Regional Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals both met on April 12th. The Board of Zoning Appeals applicant Lynn Duncan requesting administrative review on sub, uh, subdivision of record located at Loy Street and in connection with that requesting left side uh, setback and right side setback. Uh, there's some question here because uh, these lots predate the Planning Commission. Uh, the lots of record date back to 1925, so they predate any guidelines that we have to administer. So based upon that, uh, we really have no grounds on which uh, to do too much other than the fact that we did grant uh, a side setback to uh, 12 and a half feet instead of 15 feet. There are eight lots here, and this will allow them to get maximum use out of those eight lots. So. Uh, this, this involved our uh, city attorney and, and getting uh, getting him involved to make sure where we stood. And I'm afraid we have several lots, like several sections like this in the city of Clinton we may be dealing with at some time in the future, particularly up in South Clinton. So uh, items two and three that you may see there involving side setbacks to 12 and a half feet deal with the, the same issue as Lynn Duncan. And then Michelle Hatmaker requesting front setback variance from 30 feet to 25 feet for property located at 182 Harbor Drive, property zoned R2. Uh, the issue here is that uh, her property backs up to the lake and there is a depression in her backyard that she needs to avoid and moving her house five feet forward would help her to avoid that depression. So she, we get, uh, granted her the right to uh, move her house five feet forward, uh, fill the depression, and hopefully this will resolve her issue rather than having to, uh, to make some kind of other plans there. And then the Regional Planning Commission also met the same night and approved uh, the site plan for Lynn Duncan based upon all the uh, uh, 
guidelines that we had been granted from Mr. Cry and the guidance that we had been uh, given there. Then two items, uh, I-75 Industrial Group Series 3 LLC requesting annexation and zone assignment of M2 for property located at Sinking Springs Road and also the same applicant requesting rezoning from B2 to M2 for property located at 151 Frank L. Diggs Drive. These two items were withdrawn by the applicant and since this is the second time, they will have to resubmit these. Uh, we can't postpone them but once and after that they have to resubmit. And then applicant Will Robinson and Larry Harmon requesting site plan review for property located at Common Point Lane Property is zone B4. This is behind uh, Bojangles, up, uh, up toward the interstate. It is a takeout only pizza structure. No sit in at all, it's all takeout. And they will be using the existing drive there from uh, Bojangles to get in and out, but uh, there will be no on site uh, eating there. It's strictly uh, order and pick up. And there's some issues with landscaping and storm drainage. But as soon as these were met, uh, they, we passed it uh, subject to those being met to Mr. Barrett uh, satisfaction. And then applicant Ken White requesting site plan review for property located at Liner Street. The property is zoned R3 and this, this was also asked to be postponed. This is the first time so it can be resubmitted next month. Also as we'll deal with later in the, in the meeting, uh, council recommended to City Council the passage of a P1 amendment uh, dealing with our parks. And uh, as I say, we'll be dealing with that later in the meeting. Any questions? Any, any questions for Mr. Gann? Uh, Larry, the, where the boat jangles, where the road is, going toward the pizza place, I guess. Because when Tommy built that, there was some controversy going on between the city and county. Who's going to take that up? What was the in, in verdict there? Our former director of... Uh, Public Works, Mr. Duncan, uh, excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Murphy, made you're, sure you're that that, that met that. our specifications. We would not accept it until he was right. happy about the way that it was built and the drainage and everything else. So it is up to it's up to city specifications. Okay. Thanks, thanks to Mr. Murphy. Good. It's actually a city street now. Yeah. Yes. Right. But not until he approved it. <laughs> any um, any other questions? Larry, this um, applicant there at um, Sinking Springs Road, what was what was his was plan was? You know, we don't know. It's it's been submitted twice. No one's ever shown up, and the first time it was with postponed, and then this time nobody showed up. Uh, we have no knowledge exactly what they want to do, other than that they want to change it to M two. You know, is it? Do they, they want to be annexed? Yes. Is it? Is it? Have y'all did y'all get that far to see if it was any touching no. points or anything? It's never it's never even been broached in okay. meetings yet. Okay. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I've being on being a ex officio on the chamber, the chamber knows about the same amount we do. They're asking me what's going on. I say I don't know. You tell me what's going on. Okay, so, that's the donut that didn't get annexed. Yeah. Behind Buddy's Barbecue. Oh. Asking, so they're they're and why I don't know if they're asking just to annex part of it this time. Not the full donut, just half the donut? Half the donut. It's a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many comments I can make on that, and I won't. We're not a half a donut type of council. We're a whole donut. There, I said it. Um, the um, I'm glad everything worked out with Lynn Duncan. He's a, he's a very good builder, and it's going to add a lot of, it's going to spruce up Loy Street and that whole area a lot, and it's going to add a lot of value to a lot of people's homes, too. Eight houses, I believe. Yeah, it would be nice. Charlie be happy. <laughs> Doubt it. Huh? Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and one other question I had. I'm sorry. I'm full of That's questions. Right. The, um, the P1 designation. Did y'all create this um, motion to, for approval based on what we sent back? Or did you, was this created or just a process thing? This, I think this, there were some amendments there. P, we're in a very unique situation. You have a private entity. In, in a park that is administered by a uh, a city, uh, specifically a Spire Park, which is privately owned, but yet we have administrative uh, control over it. The only thing in in our area 
that we can think of that even comes close to it is Biltmore, and that's certainly not Biltmore. But there were some concerns, particularly as you read it here in a minute, about not only Aspire, but anything that may come about in the future. We want to maintain the scenic structure of our area, the natural beauty of our area. As you read it there, one of the questions that came up, what if they want to knock off half the side of the hill? That's going to destroy part of the, and at least we need to be able to discuss this, perhaps control it, maybe say, no, let's not do that, because that's going to destroy the overall look of it. Everything has been great. In fact, we, Aspire was consulted on this. They have absolutely no problem with it. It's just a matter of we're trying to, to foresee any future problems in maintaining, let's call it the natural beauty of, of our area. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Larry? No. Thanks, Larry. <coughs> Clinton Regional, um, well, you did that. <coughs> um, Clinton Utilities Board Report, Councilman Fair. Um, in the packet the, this month, I, I asked uh, General Manager to send over this uh, PowerPoint, and I just wanted to point out, um, just real quick, highlight uh, the, the debt levels. This particular PowerPoint, for those at home that don't see it, it, it talks about CUB's. Um, the way that they've managed their debt, and, and I'll just give out some of the numbers. On this is as it pertains to principal. Um, Oak Ridge, uh, around seventy million dollars in debt. Um, LCUB, seventy-eight. KUB, a million, and um, CUB is six point six, right there under. So that 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 was very impressive um, as a board member to see see the numbers, and what that 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 has a direct effect on our ratepayers and if you see that next slide there of what a ratepayers responsibility for the principal and it and it's quite significant and uh, if you can go a couple of, um, down you can see that when it comes to uh, the water there's there is no debt so very proud of the job that uh, leadership and the, that the folks over at CUB have done and managing debt I know this council feels how they feel about fiscal responsibility in debt and so it's nice to see uh, one of our stakeholders and one of our shareholders in the community and one of our partners feels the same way so I think it's it's a healthy um, fiscal situation for both the city and the utility and that's that's all I had uh, unless you guys have any questions if anybody has any questions I'll take them at this time any questions for Zach Zach I've got one I've got an email uh, uh, about the uh, KUB article in the paper going to uh, get in the broadband business. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about it other than I guess it's competition in the Comcast and maybe a lot of people like to see that. Can you share any thoughts? Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea or, or bad, but uh, what's your thoughts on that? So I'll get you more information for sure to provide to, to all the council members about broadband. Uh, when I was going through the required training and we had it over at the University of Tennessee, I don't know if it was MCAT or CCAT who put that on, but as utility board member, you have to have a certain amount of training. And um, there was a consensus among some of the board members there that broadband is quite a headache for certain utilities. And it's been a, a um, expensive headache. And it's caused some of these utilities to take on ex excessive amounts of debt. Um, that led me to believe, just broad brush, 30,000 feet up, that it's a cost benefit analysis um, for a very few people that don't have access. So where you see broadband being used is oftentimes in remote uh, parts of, of East Tennessee or Tennessee. Think somewhere like, you know, New River, Bryceville, where Comcast perhaps doesn't reach. I'm making an assumption there. Um, whereas here in the city of Clinton, um, the, 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 everybody has an option to get broadband, and it is a limited one. It's either, you know, Comcast or you can get AT&T or DirecTV perhaps. Um, but, you know, the utility, my opinion is CUB is not in the business of laying cable or fiber optics that will be obsolete within perhaps five years or even sooner. They're talking about uh, now satellites, you know, Elon Musk has got some initiatives to start co doing competition and uh, so say all that, it's a cost benefit analysis uh, as a board member. But I want to get further drilled down information so I can get pushed out to you guys so then you can talk to your folks that have that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any yeah. other questions? If I'm not mistaken, Councilman McBride has brought this up. I think Morristown, Hamblin County has it, and mm -hmm. they've had all kinds of headaches, and he, he can probably give us some insight into this too. Yeah. They do. That's one of the utilities that I'm aware of, and you're correct. You almost think you know, more rural utilities that where broadband and, and, and cable like that's just not, it's, it's, it, it, it needs some support that these utilities are given. But I think when you live in a larger area that there's already somebody in that lane, so to speak. Yes, and, and there's some other contractual agreements that the utility CUB has reached with Comcast that flow to the benefit of the utility, which directly flows to the benefit of the ratepayers. And, and so the, the early on, years and years and years ago, uh, CUB was able to aggressively negotiate some of these deals on the front end, and they just, over time, have accrued to the benefit um, of the utility at the expense of, of Comcast, and we wouldn't want to be in breach of that. And I, There's more information I will get and gather and push to you guys because I think it's, it's an important thing. I've been asked that before, and I want all of our folks out there to understand uh, what we're doing and why we do it. There was an article recently about KG, so we may have more questions about it. Yeah. yeah. Going back to your graph, you know, that really is an impressive graph where I don't know, rooftop wise, Knoxville may be bigger than C Knoxville KUB may be bigger than Clinton CUB, but um, it should be about the same as Lenore City and Oak Ridge. And you're right. looking at Oak Ridge having over $70 million in debt with their utility and, and we're right at close to you know, six and a half, seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's that is impressive. I didn't want to overlook that, but hats off to you guys. Um, before we go any further, can you uh, I had someone call in. I don't know your name back there. I just told him. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. I mean, thanks, Josh. That's who sent me the text. Thanks, Zach. Um, other board and committee reports? Uh, Larry, you have anything? Uh, might share with you uh, our, uh, our director at Green McAdoo is doing a fantastic job. He's already got a lot of plans in place. Uh, for those people that have enjoyed Jazz on the Hill, it is going to be back. Uh, I think right now, I didn't bring those notes with me, I think the second Saturday in the month they're planning to have Jazz on the Hill all summer. He's planning to have uh, cleanup days, I believe first Saturday in the month, to try to pick up garbage and, and stuff along the, the sides of the road. And he's also planning some, uh, some training clinics uh, to try to help people with various things. I think he's got one uh, that he's listing now about how to, uh, how to determine what is actual real news and what's fake news. How you can how you can find out which, you know, what's true and what's not. Hmm. So Adam's Adam's trying to expand the uh, the reach list let's say of Green McAdoo, trying to, to involve people and try to make it really a, a one of the center hubs for our community. And he is uh, as Roger I think explained when, when we hired him, he is a ball of fire. He is he's on top of everything. Right. Now, did you make, make, make mention of the food trucks? Yeah, I think he's going to use food trucks. Uh, During that same time, the jazz yeah, on the hill? I believe so. He had a whole raft of things. I had a whole sheet of notes. And he was going to be here tonight, but his father had a stroke Saturday, so mm -hmm. he went home to Chicago for the week. But we'll get him, try to get him there next week. Okay. This is really good. Thanks, thanks again, Larry. Um, general Government Report, Mr. Houck. Mayor, in February, council approved an agreement with the Anderson County Board of Education to lease the city football field and baseball field for Clinton High School Athletics. The agreement was modified by the Anderson County Law Director and approved by the Anderson County Commission as modified, which effectively placed the Anderson County Board of Education in breach of the approved agreement. We have since modified the agreement to, do, to all agreeable parties relative to the liability requirements. We would therefore request authorization to execute the revised lease agreement. So moved. Here, motion to approve. Second. So, motion and second. Any further discussion? What was the the main change or the, the main thing they changed that we're approving? Public in, public entity partners, which is our insurer, requires any third party user to put the city down as an additional insured. Due to state law that was explained to me, the county government can't do that. 
to the city. So they could put us an additional insurer, but for our liability, we went back and, and really strengthened the paragraph. Um, pretty much the Board of Education is liable for anything and everything that happens there. And we had them also increase their amount from one million to two million. Okay. Who will be the point of contact, you think, for the football field and baseball field? Brad Clint, do you think? Probably, yes. Okay. Construction starts right after graduation. Yes, Monday, Monday after graduation right now. Good. Yes. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yes, Mayor. The 2021-2022 balance budget will be posted probably sometime by Friday on Dropbox for y'all. Uh, finance, I'll defer to Gail. You've got your sales tax report. We had another good month with sales tax. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at state sales tax, which you know, the cities kind of follow suit with that, we've already met pretty much our budget for state sales tax uh, right now. The city was up uh, a little over 14% year to date. We're up almost 11% right now. Uh, Countywide this month was up a little over 33%. So we're still trending very much in a positive direction on on sales tax. Uh, our finances this month, uh, if you'll notice our bottom line, we have an excess of a little over a million dollars right now. Um, that will slowly taper off as we have collected the majority of our property tax right now. So for the next few months of the year, we live on, on those property taxes that we brought in. And of course, we continue to get our state share taxes. Uh, part of that's due to we've you know delayed a lot of capital projects this year because of COVID. We do have some of those coming up at the end of the year, so you'll see that dwindle down some. But um, based on our conservative budgeting, and we and the departments has stayed within that from their spending. Um, and of course, we dropped a lot of our revenue projections uh, at the beginning of this budget year, and a lot of those have come through better than what we expected. So. Looks really good from the finance standpoint. Great. Any questions for Gail? Gail, we talked about CUB's debt. Can you go over the city's kind of overview of you know how we're doing on that? Are we? I don't have those numbers in front of me right now, but we're projected. I believe it's 2026. I believe the city will be debt free. Um, the debt you all issued, and you know we issued the debt for the school system, but we put that in line with. The rest of our, our other payoff, um, so we're I mean, we're not don't see any need to incur any anytime soon. So we should be on target to to pay off in 2026. That we could possibly pull some money out and pay off early, but the way ours is structured, we would pay a premium to pay it off, which is not good. As well as, unlike some of your personal debt, we don't have the option to just pay off portions. It's either all or none. And so um, some of ours right now just wouldn't wouldn't fall into place to pay off early. So, but by 2026, you'll be debt free. How much would that free up on like an annual basis or debt service? Is that like a about a million dollars or? Well, this budget year you've got budgeted um, 1.3 million in debt service. Now, part of that the school system pays us back. Okay. Uh, they pay about. Probably three, four thousand, hundred thousand dollars or so that they pay back. So probably about a million dollars. That'll be an interesting budget year. It'll be a good budget year. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Gail. That's all I have. Um, any questions for Roger on this um, the project list, the activities? Any projection opening date for the splash pad? A lot of people are asking about that. The current one, probably, depending on the weather, but sometime probably mid-May. We'll probably usually do it Memorial Day weekend, but Good. possibly earlier this year if weather stays warm. The fireworks are going on planning then? Yes, we've got it planned for July the 3rd, Saturday, July the 3rd, which Good. is all the activities. Um, probably pretty much back to normal in most things we'll probably try to spread things out a little better so it won't be larger crowds in one area good excellent so why are we doing it july 3rd again we've so always when it fell on the fourth moved it to the third 
Sunday's the fourth. Yeah. God doesn't like fireworks. <laughs> well, he created them. <laughs> I just, I just kind of scratched my head on that one. It's like having. Never mind. I'll be quiet. Roger on council over the years you do get concerns about speeding in neighborhoods and there was one recently can you kind of explain you know typically it's you know the river bend area eagle bend mariners point some of the things we're doing there to combat yes. that we have um, here at traffic engineers with cannon and cannon and asked them to look at three areas uh, one they did a preliminary on the um, north charles Seavers boulevard at the exit 122 which is a pretty extensive um, um, set of plans they've got. It's, it's preliminary, but we've also asked them to look at Eagle Bend, Riverside, and River Bend. They've came back with a few things, just ideas kind of to get our thoughts on what we might like. We've asked them to proceed on with a couple of them, give us some areas, recommendations, maybe where to put them. Uh, traffic islands, kind of like we put out here at the middle school. Um, the small um, roundabout uh, wheel. The roundabout, it's not a true roundabout, but it's a smaller version right. of possible places. Uh, they've got some tables, traffic tables that protrude out from the sidewalk. So there's three or four different designs. Plus, you know, the biggest thing, this is one thing we're doing on Market in Maine, is actually narrowing the lanes down, which is a big traffic common feature. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thanks, Roger. Under ordinances and resolutions, um, first reading of new ordinances, ordinance number 659. This is amending the city of Clinton travel policy. Is there a motion for approval? To move. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Roger, you'd like to just, uh, give us the cliff notes on that? It's pretty well just updating it and bringing it in line with the IRS rates for travel per diem and mileage. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Again. Yes. Councilman Brown, mm -hmm. Councilman Harrell, yes. Councilman Stanley, yes. Councilman Hatmaker, yes. Councilman Thayer. Yes. Mayor Burke. Yes. Ordinance number 659 passes on first of two readings. Ordinance number 660 amending CMC Title 14, Section 14 613, which is the P1 slash mixed use park district. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roger, you want to speak on that? Um, and which I was just looking over the ordinance, pretty much as, as uh, Councilman again said, it just puts in some our best environmental practices to be used, uh, just to ensure that, as, as uh, Councilman said, that the area remains pretty much the terrain it is surrounding area. Um, okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman again. Yes. 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 Ordinance number 660 passes on first of two readings. Uh, under second and final reading, ordinance number 658, this is amending Title IX, Chapter 6, uh, the mobile food vending regulations. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Roger, do you want to talk, speak on that? Um, as I told you last month, it pretty much just simplifies the process, makes it much easier for <coughs> someone to come in and get one. It uh, changes it to a $25 annual permit. Um, still has some restrictions on, on public land, where and how you can do it, but then it rel relieves a lot of the restrictions on private property. Okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor, when, uh, Mr. Hawk, when one comes in, what's is there an inspection of that trailer itself? First time you First time they've got a permit, first time you've seen this uh, vendor, let's say. It, what's the inspection space? Gina then? inspects them. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have their health department inspection and that stuff, so they have to provide us with that. Um, they have to provide us with their business license. Uh, usually if it's somebody on Knoxville, they have one there, but they can provide us that one. Right. Uh, so there is some procedures. So the inside sure. working of the trailer itself is Mr. Householder? No? Or really? It's no. usually the health department, isn't it? Yeah, yeah most of the okay. health department. Okay. It's not any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann. Yes. Councilman Fry. Councilman Yes. Councilman Stein. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Ordinance number 658 passes on second and final reading. Under adoption of resolutions, resolution number 810, this is a personnel policy update and revision. Hear a motion for approval? So moved. Second. 
have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Would you like to comment on that? It really just brings uh, updates from state and federal laws that have changed, but it also gives the city manager the lead way uh, that usually a lot of the personnel stuff is fluid and we're all the time getting changes, so it gives the city manager the lead way to make those changes in between uh, odd number of years, which will bring it back to council every odd number for approval, but it kind of gives that lead way. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Questions? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Um, resolution number 18 passes on first reading. Any old business before us? Mr. Mayor, I got uh, something. <clears throat> Mr. Gann, is it true, being old business, is it true you got a Reggie bar in your freezer that's 40 years old? Serious, I need, I need an answer. <laughs> I was told that. <laughs> is that true? That is true. I have six of them. Are they worth anything? I'm not putting them up for sale yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the buyer wants to pay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny stuff. Any other old business? Any new business? I have a couple items here, of course. Um, under new business, the review and approval of certificate of good moral character for retail liquor license application. Suresh Patel and Alish Patel at 2170 North Charles Seabrook Boulevard. Is that, would you like to approach the podium, please, sir? My name is Louise Patel, address is 4920 Creek Rock Lane, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, just trying to open up a liquor shop near Park Club. Sorry, North Charles Boulevard. Where's the location? Uh, 2170. Where is that? Uh, right near the interstate. <coughs> it's next to Buddy's Barbecue. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, have you already, what's the process? Are there, have you already gotten an application? Yes, I have applied for it. Then this is the next step, mm -hmm. as far as good moral character. When, when are they supposed to be finish the building that you would be in? Well, they should be starting soon. I would say next month or so. Okay. Finish up in, say, a couple of months, three, four months. Okay. She's not right. exactly sure the decline on those yet, but sooner the better. How many, how many stores do you ha have right now? I don't have any. I've been managing first one. Do you have any other store, any, what's your, any other businesses? I do have like a convenience store in Knoxville, so okay. I'm kind of used to that and uh, has run a liquor store as a manager in Knoxville too, so kind of have the experience. Any other questions? Any questions from the council? Do we, do we make a motion on this or just? Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, so move. We got to make a motion first, man. <laughs> <laughs> good moral character. Review uh, and approval of certificate of good moral character for the liquor license. I'm making that motion. So move. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck to you. Hang around for a second. If you can, I'll, go, I'll like to talk to you. Um, any other new business? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I may, uh, I'd like to, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'll make a motion. I don't know if a motion is necessary, but I want to make one to, to direct and authorize the city manager to review uh, with, with the city mayor, to review with the city manager. Uh, the current contract uh, that the city managers can come back next month with any recommendations that we see fit. Um, that's my motion. So, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just I think it's important that, that as we plan for the future what's going to happen here in the, in the city over the next few years, I think that Roger's leadership has been um, exemplary. I couldn't have asked for a better partner for city council to work with and in light of that I want to make sure that we can handcuff him a little bit and uh, make sure that he doesn't ride off into the sunset prematurely um, because you know I think there's a lot of great things that are happening for the city and um, I think that city mayor would be appropriate to take a look at that and come back with any recommendations they see fit. Very good, I agree. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes.
one other thing, Mayor, real quick. The TML uh, Town and City newspaper will be coming out later this week. Good story if each of you should look at. It's about the city of Greenville, Historic Depot Street, make over a first phase of Greenville Downtown Revitalization Plan. It's their phase of our TAP grant, almost identical to what we're proposing or what we're going to be doing in downtown Clinton on Market in May. Uh, you got some really good pictures. Uh, you'd almost think you were looking at Clinton looking at it. You may want to um, provide a copy for I some can. of the ladies here. They might be interested in looking at that too. So thank you. Anything else? Roger, one thing I was thinking about during the meeting, we talked earlier, I think there's a council we talked about this, having some type of employee, since we didn't have a Christmas luncheon, maybe have a Christmas, a, 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 a cookout or employee appreciation earlier than later just because of the weather, being a little bit cooler in the daytime versus getting 95 degrees. Did we talk maybe sometime later in May? Yeah, we discussed it maybe sometime well, later part of May. I think, I think the council would support that, and do that, and show our appreciation. Good. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned.